I forgot all about him for the Baltimore Ravens, but that's a good, that's a great thing because the Ravens made us forget about him. I remember Zach Ertz, when he first got released, it was like, ooh, okay, all right, we could add another tight end to the mix. The timing just lined up too because we had just lost Mark Andrews and it was looking like we lost Mark Andrews for the rest of the year, but Baltimore Ravens and Mark Andrews said no, and that hyperbolic chamber said no. But anyway, it was looked like Mark Andrews was going to be out for the foreseeable future. And Harbaugh has spoke about how there was an outside chance that if the Ravens reached a certain point in the playoffs, which we're grateful that they have, and we'll talk about that later, uh, that Mark Andrews could come back. But it just made sense like, oh, the Baltimore add Zach Ertz to the mix. Why not? Why not? Because while we knew Isaiah Lockley, he had some potential. We, we, we saw it before, but we hadn't really seen it through, during the regular season too much, especially when Mark Andrews was active. We know Charlie Cola, he has some potential. We haven't got to see him hardly at all. It was like, why not throw a veteran in the mix? Why not? It just makes sense, right? And it did, but the Ravens didn't. They didn't. And I remember Josina Anderson, she reported on uh, the potential move. She said what the Ravens wanted to do first was – See how their tight ends were. See how they were without a Mark Andrews before they considered adding a Zach Ertz. It was said that they were interested in a Zach Ertz. So they like Zach Ertz, but they wanted to wait first. And I believe a couple of years ago, they actually tried to trade for a Zach Ertz. I believe. I'm like 83% sure that they tried to trade for him a couple years back. Um, I think when he was with Philly, so before he went to the Cardinals. Now, um, I say all that to say this, Zach Ertz, he was a forgotten man, especially well, by me, and I know by probably a lot of y'all too, but he got signed today. He got signed by the Detroit Lions because apparently they lost their number two tight end, and they got a kind of big game coming up against them 49ers, uh, and they could use all the firepower that they could possibly get. So they signed Zach Ertz today. It says, um, read the, re the report from Tom Pelissero. He said, three-time Pro Bowl tight end Zach Ertz is signing with the Lions per sources. Ertz will start out on a practice squad with plans to potentially elevate him for the NFC Championship game. I mean, potentially? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's potentially. I think it's definitely going to happen because, yeah, y'all got a game coming up like now. So ain't no potentially. Uh, but anyway, uh, it says a boost for the final stretch. And that, that's, that could be significant for them. But um, our focus is not on the Detroit Lions or the San Francisco 49ers, at least not yet. Well, let's see what we get. But anyway, um, this more is to give a huge shout out to Isaiah Likely. Um, and, and the Baltimore Ravens, their coaching staff, uh, Lamar Jackson for getting it to him, um, and Isaiah Likely for making the most of his opportunity. See, you know you got chemistry with somebody when they throw you a pass and it is a dangerous pass and the pass falls incomplete and you look at them and you just go and that's exactly what Isaiah likely did and on your next opportunity when that person the same person throws you a pass it's a touchdown <laughs> it's a touchdown oh, I love Isaiah likely that man is serious man Isaiah likely is the truth man he, he really is he, he really is um I, I, I've seen it again, unfortunately, because, you, you know, when when one player goes down for the Baltimore Ravens and another player shows out for the Baltimore Ravens, there's some fans that's like, all right, we can get rid of the one who went down, even though he's going to come back. We can get rid of him. And for me, I'm like, no, keep everybody, man. Keep everybody, because I've still continued to see the conversation among some Ravens fans like, oh, we, we should trade Mark Andrews. But then I saw the conversation yesterday. Somebody said we should trade Isaiah Likely. And I had to respectfully disagree with that because had we traded Isaiah likely, then what, what if, if Mark Andrews went down, then what? We would still have Charlie Cole and we don't know what he could possibly be yet, but we don't have to know yet. He's quality depth because you got an Isaiah likely. Like the way that I think about it, because I don't like just getting rid of guys just because, oh, one guy shows out. Oh, okay, we can get rid of this guy in this place. Oh, one guy showed out. Oh, we can get rid of him now. Depth is something serious, man. And if this Baltimore Ravens season has taught you anything, anything, it has taught you that depth matters like crazy. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. 
Because if you ain't ready, as the Baltimore Ravens quickly found out in years past, years previous to this one, if you ain't ready, oh, it's tough. And, and I know the Ravens have had some bad injury woes over the past couple years, it's, and it's just been some crazy stuff that just doesn't even make any sense, how injuries just literally beat up on the Baltimore Ravens over the past couple years. But this year, they, there was a bunch of injuries too. There was a lot of injury with the Baltimore Ravens. But a difference this year, they had the depth. Now, in 2021, they had a nice roster now. And they had a lot of depth, but they lost, like, all of that depth, too. They lost the starters. They lost the depth. They lost everything. But this year, they faced a lot of injuries, a whole lot of injuries, as y'all know, from week one. And actually, even before week one, because there were guys going out before the season even started. Like, they lost their long snap and whatnot, and then week one, they lost J.K. Dobbins, Marcus Williams, Ronnie Stanley. They didn't have Mark Andrews. Marlon Humphrey, he was out before week one. Um, Mark Andrews, he was also out before week one. They didn't lose him in week one, but he was out before. So they were dealing with it from jump, literally from jump, but they had the depth in place. And the, my point of this video is just to highlight that depth is so important. The reason why I wanted the Baltimore Ravens to sign Zach Ertz in the first place is so they could have even more quality depth. I did not want him or anticipate him starting over Isaiah Likely, and I did not think that that would be or should have been the case. But this guy is a Super Bowl champion. He got Super Bowl experience. You could have added that to the mix, and you could have had more quality depth. Especially because your guy, your top tight end, he was out. Then, on the flip side, all right, they didn't add Zach Ertz, but what Isaiah likely has provided them with has been quality what? Depth. Depth. There's been games this year. Odell Beckham Jr., he's missed. Rashad Bateman, he's missed. But what do the Baltimore Ravens have at the wide receiver position this year? They had a Zay Flowers as well. They had a Nelson Aguilar as well. They had a Devin DuVernay as well. Even Tylen Wallace too. So what did the Baltimore Ravens have? They had quality depth. At the running back position, J.K. Dobbins, he was out of there. Lost in the first game of the season. But the Baltimore Ravens, they still had a Gus Edwards. They still had a Justice Hill. So what did they have at the position? Quality depth. Marlon Humphrey. He missed the first four games of this season, and he missed a bunch of games throughout, too. So I remember at the beginning of the season, we was all shaking in our boots. We was all wondering, like, oh, my goodness, the secondary is scary. It's not looking good. Oh, my, this is yikes. But what did Brandon Stevens provide? What did they sign Ronald Darby for? They had Rocky Cena as well. Or Darius Washington, he was in the mix for a little bit, then he got hurt. But Arthur Millette, he's been in the mix, too. What did they provide? Quality depth. Week one of the season. Marcus Williams goes out with injury. Week one goes out with a pec injury. Uh-oh, he could be out for the season with a pectoral injury. Oh, no, he's going to rehab instead of surgery. Ooh, that could take a while. He was out for a while. But what did the Baltimore Ravens have to where they were straight, even though Marcus Williams was out for a long time? Geno Stone, Kyle Hamilton. What did those guys provide? Quality depth. Depth makes such a big difference. Tyus Bowser. Tyus Bowser has been out literally the whole year. At chunks of this year, the Baltimore Ravens lost to Dolph away for like three, four games. They had David Ajabo early on in the season, but what happened to him? He ended up being out for the remainder of the season with two injuries. But the Baltimore Ravens, they signed a Jadavian Clowney. The Baltimore Ravens, they signed a Kyle Vinoy. They had Trent Simpson in the, in the woodworks. They had Malik Harrison, too. So what did the Baltimore Ravens end up having at outside linebacker, even though they were missing a Bowser, even though they missed a Dafe away for a while, even though David Ajabo has been out for the majority of the year, what did they have and provide themselves with? Quality depth. You get it. You get it. It makes the world of a difference when you have quality depth. Because the quality depth is the big reason why the Baltimore Ravens are even in the position that they're in right now because they have it. If they didn't have it like they ain't had it in past years, we might not be even having a conversation right now. We may all be on vacation. We may all be in Cancun right now. But since the Baltimore Ravens have equipped themselves with quality depth, it's made such a big difference. Thank you, Baltimore Ravens. Thank you, Eric DaCosta. But thank you because... Y'all put us in this position to where, in the words of former Baltimore Raven Marcus Peters, I think we ain't done yet.